Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly Ballers POV show. We are here today with Logan O'Shea. And um, before we get into Logan and some questions for him, we are going to show a very brief clip to uh, see what Logan does in his spare time. All right, Logan, with that, please tell us about yourself and what it is that you do. All right, um, well, uh, Arizona local, uh, born in Tucson. Um, as a young kid, uh, I got introduced to motocross when I was seven. Wow. Um, it was the first thing I started riding, so it was, it was cool. Um, I rode for about four years, uh, raced all that good stuff, and um, just uh, some family issues where my mother was more worried about like my safety sure. um so we just stopped all that and did like sports and all that stuff and um about like four years ago i came across another moto setup and it's just been rolling since then and just good times riding and you know having fun and more or less just making good connections riding and um the people that i've met doing it is it's been unique so it's one of those things that I'm, I'm grateful to have have found and uh and you know have today nice well, is there um, anyone that's kind of not familiar with your sport? Is there a little bit, kind of a brief um, background or anything you can tell us, just kind of the, the, the general basics of what you do? Yeah, so um, motocross is like known for racing and um, pretty much like the uh, freestyle side of it. So you have like the FMX groups. Um, a lot of what I've been introduced in is uh, the free riding. Okay. So free riding is just kind of like going out. Um, you have to build it if you want it. So. A lot of the jumps that we have are just stuff that um, a group from me and uh, groups from uh, like Phoenix, um, we go down and we just kind of partake and um, build something for us as there's nothing really uh, as an option. Mm -hmm. So uh, free riding has just kind of been evolving into just kind of like what you want to make it. Nice. Um, so it's if you want to go ride trails, if you want to go jump, it's really just being with your group and, and enjoying what you're doing, which is kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, but a lot of what I've been falling into is just like jumping in the freestyle side of things. It uh, it has a lot of BMX side to it. So like the freestyle, it's kind of just like a expression of freedom. So it's like everyone has their different notch on it or, or style. So it's cool to see everyone like come together. You'll have riders that used to race who just are really good on style. And then you have riders that like for me, I used to do BMX who incorporate a little more like bike tricks and uh, freestyle to, to the riding side of it um, and for a lot of it it's just more for people to enjoy the scene and, yeah. and have a good group of dudes to ride with so free riding is kind of that all in one picture it's just good times and having fun nice it's good very cool all right well before we get into some questions here guys don't forget to like follow and subscribe to ballers on youtube instagram and facebook we really appreciate the follows uh, so let's get into questions here for Logan. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how competitive do you say that you are? Uh, I'd probably go with like a 7 or 8. Okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a very cocky person, but I, I feel like I am very competitive driven. Um, and it's sometimes a quiet competitiveness. Well, more or less just kind of one of those things I feel more humble than sure. anything. So I don't really like to vocalize that, uh, you know, I'm like having that moment. Um, gotcha. But I think it's one of those things that um, is good to have. It's one of those things that like pushes you to Definitely. to go out and try something. Um, kind of gives you that constant motivation to yeah. to go out and do your best. I would say you'd have to be a little bit competitive when what you do. I mean, it's. It's definitely not for someone that's a little bit more on the introverted or shy side, or, or maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. No, you're, I think, um, I mean, for me, I feel like I'm somewhat of an introverted or a shy guy until I get on the bike, yeah, um, yeah. which might be a reason to, I mean, it, that's kind of how I show myself. Um, so I, I think you're right with yeah. that one for sure. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, what would you say would be your biggest failure um, in terms of the things that you've kind of been doing over the years? Um, I'd say the biggest failure is not taking opportune to some of the things that have been presented with motocross and everything that kind of uh, affiliates to it. Starting off is just kind of, I feel like I, I definitely could have done more, but um, in some areas I always feel like you're where you're supposed to be. And um, I feel like I've put more focus into enjoying it and having fun with it. So it's one of those failures that I think everyone can have in the back of your mind of what you're not doing. and. Um, just always got to remember to have fun and 
with that, good things have always come, so. Gotcha. Very good. Um, what's the best compliment you've ever received? Best compliment? I would say recently it's probably been like a social media buzz. Uh, yeah. I've had a lot of friends in Tucson that, um, I had like a video that got, um, like I think like 3.6 million views or something. Wow, that's um, amazing. And I got like 20,000 followers, like all this nice, crazy stuff, nice. which is cool, yeah. but um, I don't really know how to like, you know, deal with it. So I just kind yeah. of been pushing it off. But uh, a lot of friends have been giving me like good vibes and a lot of uh, applauds for cool. for where social media is going. So nice. I, I think it's rad. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Little things. Yeah, for sure. So going off that, um, what is something that someone said to you maybe as an insult, but you kind of took more of as a compliment? Um, a lot of injuries, um, so it, it happens with, with everything. Realistically, I've had friends that don't really understand the type of, I mean, you have to be like mentally prepared for getting injured or anything like that. So I've had a lot of people say, oh, you're, you're, you're hurt again, you're always injured. And uh, it definitely bums me out, but at the same time I have to consider like what I'm doing to do more of, um, which isn't always being uh, safe. You know, it's confronting your, your fear in your head and like trying to have confidence through it. And when you do that, it's the greatest feeling ever. And occasionally you make a mistake and yeah. Yeah, you're stuck with an injury for a few months. So gotcha. little things. Yeah, yeah, okay. Tell us a funny story that if we were, you know, sitting around the table with your family right now, what would be the first thing that they'd want to share? Um, they'd probably talk about my hospital trips. Um, okay. Not like they, uh, so they're not really close with the scene that I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's cool to like show them videos, but um, they mostly see like the bad sides of it, which sure. is like, hey, I'm in, I'm in the hospital right now. Um, so a lot of their stories are like what I've gone through for it or um, in some sorts my morals for riding because I, I always like look past the injury and I'm like oh, this is fine so they kind of look at it as in like the 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 youngest kid in the group that uh, was always gone to the hospital gotcha. for occasions or something like that and so before you got into the riding I mean were you do you feel like you were accident prone or is yes like, okay, really? for sure Interesting. okay <laughs> um, so even like uh, biking and mm -hmm. stuff had you know fractures in my lower vertebrae, uh, the LS1, LS2. Um, so uh, it's just one of those things that happens, and you either instantly scared of it, or yeah. it's just something that you're like, I did this wrong, and gotcha. that's why this happened. So my family sees the the more of like the kind of crazy yeah, side I'm of sure. it. Yeah, you know, but I, I can imagine. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, what is your favorite holiday movie and why do you think that is? I know it's hard to narrow down like a favorite movie, so I'll kind of yeah, go the holiday route here. I think for me it would probably be The Grinch. Mm. Um, the newer one or the... Ooh, the older one. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, only saying that is just because his, I don't know, whole demeanor in that movie is kind of just like closed off. Most likely because of like all the hurt and everything else that can come with life and everything. And it sure. kind of embraces the, the story of just like how stubborn and cold you can get to like what can actually happen with the right people that you meet and stuff like that. So I've always liked that movie. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one for sure. So if you could spend 30 minutes around a campfire with four people at the same time, doesn't have to be famous, doesn't have to be, you know, it can be live, dead, just four people around the campfire, 30 minutes talking, who would you choose and why? Um, camping's like a top favorite for me. So oh, really? that okay. mean, that'd be a good group, yeah. you know? Um, one of those things that uh, I'd have to choose would probably be like some idols for me. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd have, uh, you know, like Raha, Colby Raha in the, in the group, probably Travis Pastrana, just people that you, I don't know, it's, it's like understanding their side. So if I were to go with four, it'd be Raha, Pastrana, I'd do Robbie Madison, and uh, oh, Steve-O. Steve-O, Steve yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, Raha, Pastrana, Steve-O, and uh, Robbie Madison. Um, only saying is just their... Their lifestyle is so like out of this world mm -hmm. to kind of just hear like a personal perspective of what kind of goes on in their head. I think it would be really cool to, in a sort, like dissect because the, those people are like leaders in um, kind of like what a lot of people are looking forward to doing when they're thinking about riding. For me, I think it's just cool to understand their perspectives and kind of hear how they do that, what they do, you know? I think. Interesting you picked kind of four people that are in your yeah industry people that yeah. uh people that i feel like uh so colby raha he's like a really um he's a unique rider he's done some different stuff so like free riding has evolved a lot for like what he's done um he's shown a different side of uh what you can do with it 
So between like urban riding, um, he's done a lot of unique stuff that no one else has. So I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, Pastrana is just, just this dude who's invented so many styles of ramps and um, undergone so many like good riders and have done like world's first and just like what it takes to get to that level I think is just like astonishing and he's also a huge FMX dude okay. um, so there's like you have like the free ride uh, the FMX guys um, and then I, I also chose Steve-O because he's just like a wild card. So is that Steve-O from like the Jackass yeah. movies? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure that's um, what I'm talking about here. No, I just feel like talking to him over yeah. a campfire, you would just undergo the most crazy experience I from imagine. probably just one yeah. of his stories. So yeah, just yeah. like someone that would just keep it lively, you know, that's he's, he's a top. Yeah. Um, Madison also, he's like a world record um, like in like multiple areas, so he's set like the world's first like 100 foot step up, 100 foot step down in like wow. La uh, Las Vegas, I think, like um, some years ago. And it was just like so surreal to have him do that without training for that. So it's like him pushing the limits for a world record in front of thousands of people. It's like you have to be yeah. in such a mindset to calm down and, and perform. So I, just understanding them is, yeah. I think, would be like probably the biggest take yeah, home. For sure. Ups. All right. Good choices. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve? Pet peeve. Um, so uh, as I've grown up, I've always been a very, very like humble person, mm -hmm. um, quiet in some sense. But I don't always uh, enjoy like the company of like someone who's really cocky sure. um, or like high headed with it. Mm -hmm. I think in all levels, it's good to just be mutual. And yeah. regardless if you're good or bad, just showing like, just uh, I should say like compassion for what mm -hmm. you do um, as confident as you could be or good I always think it's a better rider when I see them humble and sure. with no walls you know gotcha. I think it's it's a big thing yeah absolutely uh, if you won 10 million dollars tomorrow what would you do I mean okay <laughs> there's a lot that could go with that yeah, um, yeah. for where I live in Tucson it's uh, you have to make it um, you, it's not nothing's given to you so I think like ideally if I had that kind of money I would just buy a lot of land and uh, make something that's for everyone for what we're doing mm -hmm. um, just having somewhere that is specifically for them to perform or uh, and like in other cities they have you know like professional setups and the riders are just like so good that come out of there but it's just they also have the better options so nice. if I had money I'd definitely put it on for Arizona you know Very cool. give them yeah. some give them some good stuff absolutely uh, what do you think the world's going to look like five years from now? Congested. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be... Especially Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Um, the more that I've ridden, um, like, desert and out in, like, kind of no man's land, uh, makes me appreciate that uh, quietness. Mm -hmm. So when I consider, like, where everything's moving, I can just see it as congested, uh, probably a little more, like, world craziness mm -hmm. going on. But um, yeah. I always find that like serenity with riding kind of like sure. forget about all that that in somewhat is uncontrollable I can imagine. yeah what about 50 years from now yeah so um Doesn't i <laughs> first see it so like even when i talk to people that um you know are like 40s or 50s it's like they've undergone like so much changes um so it'd be interesting because we'll be one day like the old dudes who are just yeah. like oh this was like this back in the day um 50 years from now, I can foresee probably like no gas setups. And if there are, there's going to be like a lot of speculation with them. So it's going to be interesting um, kind of going through the idea of like potentially having cities go all the way to like growth uh, into each other. So mm -hmm. there'd be like just huge amounts of, let's just say businesses set up instead of just like main cities. Sure. Also congested. So yeah, um, one of those things that I could for, for sure look back and probably appreciate the motos that we have today and mm -hmm. the gas powered equipment and yeah kind of the freedoms with that so gotcha. hopefully that doesn't go away yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so what motivates you um what motivates me is it, it goes with just what makes me want to have fun um, when I look at just regular day um, people and what they're doing with their jobs it's it's great but they're not like happy happy mm -hmm. you know I've seen people that generally don't work and they're just on cloud nine all the time um, so I think what motivates me is just having the course that makes me have a good day have fun and enjoy what I'm doing um, so riding has brought all of those to me where it's even to the point where if I'm having a stressful day it's like it can 
zen me out and kind of just reset everything in my sure. my life. So that's been nice. Nice. The simple stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, what is the biggest challenge um, you would say you're facing with the sport that you do? Um, a lot of it is like teamwork. Um, you can do a lot with one person, um, but per se, if you do a lot, you're going to be doing so much effort to just one thing that you're set on. Mm -hmm. If you have like a group of people that are all like looking for the same um, outcome, uh, realistically, you can have so much more together. So free riding is, and, and FMX uh, is kind of, uh, it's a hard way to, to say that everyone's really well communicated or giving out um, the support that's needed. So uh, there's a few people in Arizona that have done that, but there's literally maybe a, a handful that have those options. So that's mm -hmm. kind of coming to say that like uh, in other states, there's a lot more going into it, a lot more people with the same idea. And that you know, has an outcome of having spots to ride, uh, good communities, mm -hmm. um, tracks and all that stuff. And uh, Arizona, uh, out in Tucson, we lost our uh, motocross track. So oh, wow. everyone from Tucson drives out here to ride. And really? it's just one of those things that I feel like with more people appropriating the issue, there's always more to have to it. So sure. it's, uh, I think having more people in numbers is only going to grow the sport yeah, and definitely. have more, more fun, honestly. I, I think that's what it's all about is you and your friends doing what you love together and yeah. making good memories. Nice. Works good that way. Absolutely. Who's been your most important coach or mentor um, within your sport or just in life general? You know, um, ever since I started riding, I, my uh, family friend uh, got me my first setup. It was a K-Team 65. Um, so I don't think I ever would have been introduced to that lifestyle without uh, that help. Okay. So um, I would say it's it was awesome to be um, shown what riding was mm -hmm. at the age I was. And um, even when I had stopped riding, um, it came down to you know getting me another BMX bike to go race and just something meanwhile that was still riding so uh, time and time again he came through and uh, just made sure I was supported to to continue that passion that you know I had as a as a little guy so nice. it was a uh, when I look back on it I don't think it would be the same for me today if I didn't have um, the support with getting me a bike and getting me out there or okay. showing me the option to to go and do that so. Got it. Got to give it up. Very good. Um, what is one lesson your sport has taught you that you think would be beneficial for everyone to learn? Um, one thing that it has definitely taught me is humbleness. Yeah. Um, in perspective that uh, not everyone sees your side of things. So um, trying to be humble and um, just one of those things that makes you appreciate that we get to do what we do. Um, not everyone has those opportunities or or options. So it's uh it's cool to give a good notion to people when they are interested about it, but realistically just be humble and open so that they're um, more interested. You know, it's not really a big competitive scene with us. It's just more of um, good vibes, hanging out yeah. with the buds and, and enjoying it. I, as I feel like you wouldn't be doing something if you didn't enjoy it. Sure. So I feel like that's a big focus for me. Gotcha. Gotta, gotta have fun. Absolutely. Totally agree. Um, what is one thing about your sport um, that you find that people kind of don't really agree on or don't agree with you? Um, a lot of it goes down to, again, like injuries. Um, I think for some people, it's one of those things if you've never gotten hurt, it just seems so out of this world mm -hmm. to, a, to have something like that happen. Um, your body is, in a way, like super strong. Mm -hmm. um, the way that it can heal itself and everything is kind of unheard of. Um, but even having friends that aren't familiar with it. Uh, for me, it's like, I understand that things can happen. You can fall down riding your bike, you could crash your car. There's yeah. so many ways to actually get hurt. Um, what we're doing is just taking precautions. So like wearing your gear and everything so you actually aren't getting hurt. But um, there's still those people who look at it like, this is insane. I don't know why you do that. Right. But um, there's the whole side of it of what we're actually doing that makes us want to experience um, riding. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, being free and Having the ability to honestly like float around in the air is just yeah. kind of like out of this world. So mm -hmm. it's um, it's hard for them to see that picture a lot of times of, sure. of what we get out of it than what we walk away with sometimes. Gotcha. So I mean, it's not an everyday thing, but it does happen occasionally. You take a good slam or you yeah. get a good scratch. So it, I feel like it can happen with everyone. It's just the, the mindset that it's scary, you know? Right. 
So going off that, can you tell us a little bit about some of the injuries that you've gotten over the years? Yeah, so, um, uh, <laughs> uh, so I feel like since I started riding, um, I've been uh, overachieving my ability sometimes to where um, I'm trying so hard to be consistent or learn something that I really want to get down. Um, and a lot of times you get, uh, I should say, um, comfortable with what you're doing and you always need to somewhat respect it. Um, it is a machine, it is, you know, moving quite fast. So it's, uh, it's one of those things that um, last year I had two injuries. Um, to start off, me and, uh, me and my roommate, uh, Tyler, Tyler Kingston, um, we'd always flipped our bikes, like BMX bikes. Um, then it went to mountain bikes and we were doing that a lot, doing mountain bike trails. Um, and then we got our motos and it was just always a side joke where we were just um, mentioning flipping. Um, you know, it's just like, oh, we could do this on bikes. We could sure. do this on mountain bikes. Um, and then about six months down the road, it was not so much of a joke. We were like kind of, you know, who's gonna try this sort mm -hmm. of thing. So it was, um, it was cool to see how it evolved, but uh, he ended up trying a flip in the hills, um, got it around um, and uh, unfortunately just got ejectoed uh, mid-air so he actually uh, didn't land but he flopped down and he was okay um, did break his tibia um, but it was just one of those things where it's a careless scent um, we know the dangers of it but we wanted to have the experience of learning to flip so he tried got hospitalized yeah. um, I walked home like that was a little bigger than I thought it would uh -huh. um, so I go back to a riding spot and um, I thought a mini flip would be cool so not going rocketing through the air um, so I found like a little hill embankment and um, we all had a day where we all tried to flip and uh, I was a little cocky um, so I didn't take uh, any runs I just went for it I didn't really want to have the the mindset of flipping I just wanted to like execute it and not get too worried so I ended up trying it and um, I grabbed a handful of throttle and it went like 20 foot further than I thought I would go and uh, I ended up getting a fracture in the elbow and uh, they ended up plating it oh, wow. so it's like right on the joint which is really weird um, and that's fully healed now yeah okay. all, all good so okay. uh, fast forward three months uh, back to it um, having fun um, kind of, like I said, trying to get back into it. So I always start with uh, BMX or whatever, and um, we get back into moto, and uh, it goes probably about four months down the road, and uh, I was riding a 125 foot uh, tabletop. So it's kind of like a double, it's got a mound, and then 125 foot distance to the landing. Um, there's just not much of a run up, there was a little wash through it, and uh, we were riding and had a good day. I was hitting like some of the bigger jumps of, of Red Rock, so they're like 150 foot um, doubles. Um, so like just full on fourth gear, pretty fast jumps. And uh, the key with free riding is always putting maintenance in, making sure that it's set and not just kind of carelessly mm -hmm. ripping jumps. Um, I went back over to a jump I didn't work on and was just like sunset was setting right on the landing and I thought it looked so cool. Yeah. Um, so I started riding it, um, jumped it twice, was short on both attempts and was just like, yeah, that was a little, a little, eh, you know, and um, there was like signs that were telling me I should probably chill and I was just so into the moment that I wasn't really considering um, that I'm fourth gear pinned on my 450 hitting a 125 foot jump with like low visibility. Um, and I was just hyped, so I go again and uh, I did a different entrance where I was like in a higher gear, so I didn't really go as fast as I was hoping. Um, and the last second I was like, oh, we, we'll just go for it. And I grabbed throttle and uh, I think by doing that, it kind of lost traction up the lip. So the whole jump through the 125 foot was just kind of like a little sideways. Um, I ended up going short again, but I was not proper in the air. So when I hit, it just bounced and kind of the old like side to side and I, I got tossed. I ended up re-breaking my collarbone, which was already like uh, plated. Um, broke five chest ribs, collapsed the lung oh my and uh, got knocked out. So it was like, wow. it was a good one. Um, woke up uh, trying to like, just basically catch your breath. Uh, when you collapse along, it feels like half breaths, you know, where you're really kind of feeling like someone's just like sitting on your side. Um, ended up having to go to the hospital, ended up finding out um, that they don't like fix chest ribs or anything. So uh, just got a new collarbone plate and uh, a couple more months of healing. But wow. I, I learned that a lot of it is um, a long and lows are sketchy. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
the jumps that are just pinned all the way off the off the lip are they're fun when it's a certain style of jump. So the jump I was riding was just probably five foot and it just kicked you so hard. So finding the type of setups that are safer but also just as fun is kind of more my focus now. I think I was experiment like uh, experimenting with mm -hmm. what options there were and uh, what kind of jumps there were. So uh, just a learning experience yeah. for sure. But um, after that, so I was like wearing a t-shirt, um, just like real minimal gear. Mm -hmm. So um, I invested with uh, like a stealth body armor plate, okay. um, just more into the idea that that can happen. So sure. let's take precautions, exactly, um, yeah. which is just kind of like a learning experience, I'd, I'd say. But uh, it happens. But um, one of those things that I just feel like I was being a little careless, mm -hmm. just trying to you know, send it uh, maybe a little beyond my ability for the day or okay. too gassed or something, but yeah. trying to keep the respect for what I'm doing and make sure I'm being careful with it. And I think that's always important is just, I see kids go out to the hills and mm -hmm. they go and ride a jump they've never seen. Sure. Um, which is in some sense, one of those ideas that if you build it, you have a total idea of how it's gonna ride or just mm -hmm. more, I should say, confidence with it. So it's, it's one of those things that I think you need to respect while free riding is always mm -hmm. take the maintenance care of it and you'll have more fun riding and or safer time riding. Definitely. Wow. So you're all fully healed from all those. I mean, you look, look, look like you are. So yeah. Know, so like, um, besides or? the the big okay. plate um, yeah. to the shoulder, it's uh, it's just minimal. I feel like okay. that's kind of my mindset. Is it was so bad during it, but watching my body heal from it and um, not only that, but more looking at your fitness side of things. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing with motocross in all areas. Yeah. Um, is just take care of your body sure. and you always have better outcomes. So it's right. more of my focus is trying to like keep in, keep in, um, keep in mind that that's yeah. a big part of it is Definitely. fitness. Taking care of yourself yeah. for sure. All right, well, let's wrap up here with some just some fill in the blank questions. If you had the ability to fire anyone in any position right now, who would it be? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Biden. Um, you can't catch a break on the show. Not, not, <laughs> uh, not, not saying I'm against him. Uh, I just think morally, uh, it would be cool to see someone that's generally like uh, people that I meet every day. Mm -hmm. um, not someone who's been in a, one lifestyle that only understands how certain things work. Just mm -hmm. more like the morals of how everyone wants everything to work. Sure. And I'm not sure it's a really hard question, but mm -hmm. I just feel like there could be a better, more all around for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, Ideally, just I'm probably not the best one to have, to have said, but uh, I think it'd be cool to have more acknowledgement for like um, you know being outside and yeah. um, trying to be healthy and um, not really focus on the negatives mm -hmm. as there's so much of them. So I just look at what we have today that's great and mm -hmm. let's make it better. There you go. Little stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I have absolutely no desire to. I have absolutely no desire to change my lifestyle. Um, okay, that's I think that one is very important to me. Um, since I've been riding, it's uh, 10 years on BMX, uh, now four years doing moto again. Um, and just the people that uh, I've met doing that um, are family to me. Um, they're similar situations or just people that generally are just as stoked to uh, be out riding. And I think um, that's one thing that's most important is what I've gained with what I love to do. And that's the people that I've met, the opportunities, um, and just where it takes you. So I think me changing that lifestyle would, mm -hmm. wouldn't be the same me. Um, gotcha. You gotta go out and have fun and, yeah. and send it and just see where it goes. I would pay a million dollars to? Um, if I had an option to give out a million dollars, it would be to the free riders. Mm -hmm. um, realistically, just to see everyone have better opportunities to follow what they're doing. A lot of people in Arizona don't have the money side of it to have a paid for setup, which is runs uh, a couple thousand dollars and a bag landing is 10,000. So yeah. um, it'd be cool to see people in Arizona have the ability to, to get setups of what they love to do. So um, I would definitely try to spread the love so that we could all get dialed out here. That'd right. be good. Um, tell us about, I know you've used the Ballers products, so if you can give us a quick little review on your thoughts on those. Yeah, so um, we did Arizona Bike Week, mm -hmm. and uh, while we were doing the FMX shows, uh, we got um, a free pair for uh, riding the shows for you guys, and um, we uh, started wearing them the next day during the show, and they were so comfortable, they nice. were good. Um, usually my style is like the elastic, um, kind of like 
stretchy um, mm -hmm. style. So yours is a little more of like the cloth. Um, I really like it though. It's more comfortable. Um, it feels, I should say in, in its own sense, a little more fitted. Yeah. Um, so I, I've definitely been rocking them since then. Nice. Um, Love to hear it. Yeah, excited to get cool. get more with you guys. So it'd be right. cool. Awesome. Where can everyone find you? Um, so I'm on uh, Instagram as that biker kid, uh, kid with two Ds. And uh, we also do a YouTube channel. It is Slacker Crew. Um, me and all the goons just having fun, um, sending it um, occasionally, getting too rowdy, but yeah. uh, a little bit of everything. So we do like bike life, uh, wheelies, um, then we go to like FMX ramps, we'll do free riding jumps, and even what it takes for us to, to do all that. So we do like camp trips and um, just the two day weekends of us just going crazy, building stuff. So nice. a little bit of everything. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great talking to Absolutely. you about your sport. Thank you. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to Ballers on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you for joining us.